It still has its original CCC markings that Ken replicated. Folks, this is B. Mitchell Carlson. I'm an automotive writer and historian. One of my close personal friends was the late Ken Uly. I'd known Ken for well over two decades, and we both had mutual interests in vintage military vehicles. As a matter of fact, Ken was also a founding member of the North Dakota Military Vehicle Collectors Association. Ken Uly was actually the third generation of farmers out here in the Minot, North Dakota area. His family first established this farm out here in 1916. Ken started out basically through FFA in high school. After he graduated from high school, he enlisted in the North Dakota National Guard during the Vietnam era. And for his six years in the National Guard, he was a cook. And so that's where his, his love of historic military vehicles started to develop. Initially, when he was with the guards, he got involved in historical reenactment for Plains Indian War and was involved with that initially through the 1970s and early 1980s, and then his interests began to shift into military vehicles. We might as well start with the oldest and by far and away the most unique historical military vehicle that not only Ken has, but that you'll find anywhere out here, because Ken has an original 1935 Chevrolet Civilian Conservation Corps truck. In 1935, with a lot of vehicles aging out, the Army placed a large order for Chevrolet trucks, namely the Model EB ton and a half. This specific truck that Ken has was sourced locally and is attributed to actually having worked on, at Camp Morak, which is just north of Ken's place by about six miles near Carpio, North Dakota. Specifically, Camp Morak, they worked at that camp to build the dam for Lake Darling and a number of improvements out there. And they have built the fire tower, which is still standing. And there's a large upper source wildlife management area. It was all developed through the efforts of the Civilian Conservation Corps at Camp Morick, and ostensibly what Ken has been told with this very truck. got this truck, he wanted to get it out in circulation and show people because that was the other thing about Ken. He wasn't one of these guys just to throw a bunch of vehicles in a shed. When he would get them, he would like to kind of gussy them up, get them running, and then take them to a show so people could actually see what, what there is. In addition to the this, this Civilian Conservation Corps truck, Ken also found another 1935 Chevrolet Model EC. This particular one also has an interesting history because it was with the California National Guard and its markings still appear on the doors. And after the Vietnam 151 Jeeps, then of course you had to get a Dodge M37 from the Vietnam era also. And then you also have to get, you know, an M43 ambulance from that era. And then he also, you know, started getting into World War II vehicles and then just military vehicles in general and just generally anything neat, old and OD green. Some of the highlights of the Ken Uli Estate Auction, in addition to our, our, our 35 Chevrolet, we also have a number of ambulances. Ken was sort of unique in he liked military ambulances. And we have several that range from fully restored to project vehicles. He also liked Dodge M37s, and we have a number of those trucks too, including a few rear, rear variants. For example, he had an M42, which was a command truck, which looks a lot like a regular M37, except it comes equipped with a desk, and it comes equipped with, with field phones. In addition, Ken also had developed an interest in the mechanical mules. And he has, there are five that are on, on this auction from his collection, including two that are mounted with uh, uh, demilitarized replica weapons on them. One has a 75 millimeter gun and another has a uh, M40 106 millimeter recoilless rifle on the back. 
Ken unfortunately passed away in, in, in January of this year. While unfortunate that we lost him at 72 years old, we've all bettered in the world of the historic military vehicles with Ken's presence because Ken was well known throughout the country because he would travel you know, to a lot of the national meets and such, looking for vehicles, looking for parts, and that sort of thing. So like I say, he'll be greatly missed, but other people will have a chance to pick up other uh, pieces that Ken had enjoyed throughout the years from his collection.